Good day class. Today we are going to continue from where we stopped last uh, week. Comrade Isaac, a usual name. And uh, we'll be considering General Microbiology 2, MCB 2, 2, 3. And this week, we'll be considering the role of plasmids and human diseases, week two. The role of plasmids, microorganisms, and human diseases. We'll consider what plasmids are. We look at the role of plasmids in human diseases. We look at what a vector is. And uh, as you listen, I pray that uh, the understanding will be there so that you, as a student of your own, at the end of the lecture, should be able to explain what plasmids are what role do they play in transmitting or causing uh, transmitting human diseases and what is a vector in microbiological context. As I said earlier, because the word plasmid has been mentioned severally in the course of our previous lectures, we will be considering specifically what plasmids are in our today's lecture. I said that plasmids are small extra chromosomal DNA molecules within a cell that is physically separated from chromosomal DNA and can replicate independently or autonomously of the host chromosome. In other words, they can be within the cell, but they are operating without using the chromosomal DNA of the host cell. They are independent. They have their own gene and they don't use the cell's mechanism in their own replication. This is what plasmids is small extra chromosomal DNA molecules within a cell but is physically separated from the chromosomal DNA of the host cell and therefore can replicate independently or autonomously of the host cell chromosome. They are responsible for encoding or confining uh, antibiotic resistance. They the plasmids, I mean, okay naturally as small, circular, double-stranded DNA molecules in bacteria. Artificial plasmids are widely used as vectors in molecular cloning, serving to drive the replication of recombinant DNA sequences within host uh, organisms. The word vector has come to play here. we we'll look at it in the course of the lecture. And so molecular cloning. What we've learned from this slide is that um, the plasmid could occur or could be found naturally. But they can also be artificially made by insertion of DNA of interest into such plasmids or organisms which will replicate uh, that gene of interest and it will then be uh, transferred by these vectors as we come to understand in the course of the lecture. Now plasmids cause for, these are the rules antibiotic and antibiotic hydrolyzing enzymes. In other words, they are responsible 
also for antibiotic resistance. They can also cause for toxic heavy metal resistance. They cause for radiation resistance. They cause for xenobiotic compound degradation. They cause for virulence factors that are responsible for pathogenicity. Remember in the former or in the other lecture, you understand that uh, says that Hitotu were not pathogenic upon acquiring the virulent genes from a donor cell we eventually become pathogenic and she be able to start being uh, causing diseases subsequently in the course of their lifespan they called plasmid also called for uh, bacteriocin production plasmid can also carry the genetic information for a type 4 secretion system such as the tumor inducing plasmid in virulent agrobacterium tumorphaceans which is involved in gene transfers plasmids acquire mobile genetic elements insertion sequences or transposomes i told you earlier those were those jumping genes that mobilize antibiotic uh, or antimicrobial resistance genes and promote horizontal resistance determinant transfer among bacteria of various species and genera. In classification, plasmids are classified based on function. Five functions or classes are recognized based on function. Number one, fertility or F plasmids which contain tragenes they are capable of conjugation and result in expression of sex pili competent ones are that number two resistant or r plasmids which contain genes that provide resistance against antibiotics or antibacterial agents historically known as R factors before the nature of plasmid was later understood number three we have call plasmids which contain genes that called for bacteriocins that is proteins that can kill other bacteria Plasmids are classified. Some plasmids, that is their own. There are uh, plasmids that are also classified as degradative plasmids, which enable the digestion of unusual substances, e.g., toluene and salicylic acid. And lastly, virulence plasmids, which turn the bacterium into a pathogen. Bacteria that Hitherto was not disease causing, could be turned into a pathogen, courtesy of these classes of uh, plasmid. For example, those uh, TI plasmid in agri agrobacterium tumorphaceans. Vectors, as mentioned earlier in terms of molecular biology context you know you have vectors also in uh, parasitology we're talking of vectors in molecular biology context it is a dna molecule capable of self replication inside a host cell which is used as a vehicle to artificially carry foreign genetic material into another cell where it can be replicated and or expressed. This is to say this vector is just a vehicle. It's a means of conveyance. 
of this DNA molecule that is capable of self-replication. We are talking of plasmids in this case, if you remember our last lecture. Inside the host cell. Now, these artificially foreign, uh, I mean foreign bodies are artificially carried into another cell. What happens as they enter or as they are introduced, they will be replicated but will not be expressed. In other words, they can be transcribed without expression. If we are detailed, we would have also looked at the type of vectors, whether it is cloning vectors or transcription vectors or shuttle vectors or virulence vectors, as the case may be. So the definition of a vector in this case is this they can artificially uh, I may carry artificial uh, foreign genetic material into another cell where it can be replicated and kept without being expressed or it can replicate and express itself into another cell, the recipient. Artificially constructed plasmids may be used as vectors in genetic engineering just as i said a gene of interest will be introduced into a plasmid which will now serve as a vector it will then be introduced into an organism to replicate and eventually express that gene of interest into another organism they serve as important tools in genetics and in bio technology laboratory commonly used to clone and amplify amplification means making many copies of such or express particular genes the gene to be replicated is normally inserted or let into a plasmid that typically contains a number of features for their use Vectors generally consist of number one, an insert, otherwise called a transgene, that is the gene of interest. Once it is inserted, it, it is called a transgene. And it also has to have an origin of replication to allow the bacterial cell to replicate the plasmid DNA. When it is introduced or inserted by a plasmid, which is a vector in this case, into the receiving uh, bacterium, the bacterium there should be able to uh, replicate, provide an avenue or a base or a platform from where the transgene will be replicated. And number three, there should be a suitable site for cloning, for production, for multiple photocopy, referred to as multiple cloning site. A vector must have all of this to be able to express or transcribe the gene of interest. Now, features and characteristics of cloning vectors. Remember, I was trying to classify vectors into several types, whether cloning vectors or transcription vectors or shuttle vectors or virulence vectors, as the case may be. So this one's for cloning. And I said cloning simply means making many copies of same. So those that are able to make copies of the gene of interest uh, must have these features or must have uh, these characteristics one it must be small in size in other words it shouldn't be bigger than the cell that is going to carry it if it is bigger the ability to accommodate it will not be there so it has to be a small size particle so that it can be inserted and then the cell should be able to now carry and replicate it must be self-replicating inside the host cells. It must also have origin of 
replication I said earlier. A cloning vector must also possess restriction site for restriction endonuclease enzymes in the course of uh, uh, sorry uh, replication. There should be a site that should be able to uh, stop the uh, replication process for the process to stop and restart as the case may be. Now, introduction of donor DNA fragments must not interfere with the replication property of the vector. So, if the vector if the replication process, a property of the vector is stopped, it means the expression or the replication or the transcription of the gene of interest is of no use. So the vector carrying the gene of interest should not uh, be or contain something that will hinder or interfere with the normal replicative property of the vector so that life continues. Number six, it must possess some selectable marker gene such that it can be used to later for later identification of recombinant cell. In other words, something should be incorporated in such vectors such that it will be known that oh this is what is the product of the replication process. It must possess a suitable site for cloning, referred to as multiple cloning site, as said earlier. Uses of plasmids. Cloning, which is what we've just uh, discussed. Plasmids are the most commonly used bacteria cloning vectors. Number two, plasmids are used in protein uh, production. Researchers grow bacteria containing a plasmid harboring the gene of interest. For example, in the production of uh, insulin, the organism will be merged to replicate the insulin by incorporating the uh, plasmid with the mechanism or the gene which should be able to replicate this. And so protein could be produced massively by use of plasmids. So it's therapeutic. As number three is trying to talk gene therapy. If uh, a gene is lacking, which is the cause of certain diseases. Researchers or health personnel will use plasmids to insert a gene of interest and that will be transferred into the uh, person or chromosome of uh, the lacking individual for potential treatment in gene therapy. So these uh, therapeutic genes are inserted at pre-selected chromosomal target sites within the human genome and they could be able to be replicated and the lacking gene may be incorporated back. Number four, disease models. Plasmids were historically used to genetically engineer the embryonic stem cells of rats to create rat genetic disease models. In fact, in studying uh, certain diseases, your laboratory uh, animals, the rats in this case, the plasmids was what was uh, historically used. A gene of interest is incorporated, introduced into them for them to replicate it and see whether or not 
they could be able to reproduce that same thing into such organisms and then such diseases could be studied and drugs tried and all manner of such uh, research processes and so at this juncture I want to say that uh, having known what plasmids are as extra chromosomal DNA uh, component or particles that are capable of uh, autonomous or self-replication outside of the chromosomal DNA of the host can also serve as vectors in cloning, can serve as vectors in protein production, can serve as vectors in gene therapy, can serve as a disease model mechanism of study, so that at the end of it all, we should be able to understand that uh, diseases could be treated by using plasmids, even as much as plasmids also cause diseases. So, 50-50, they can cause disease, they can also be used in treating certain diseases. So genetic engineering, if we go further and as we progress in the course of the uh, field, we'll be understanding the fact that uh, we are going to, at the end of all, see the good and see the bad at the end of the whole thing. Thank you so much and God bless you. See you next week. Thank you.